Okay, so we started with the review of thermochemistry, chemical equilibrium, and kinetics. This module, module two. So first, we started with the stoichiometry, where the amount of oxidizer, which is usually air, which is required for completely burning one kilogram of a fuel, is calculated. So considering any hydrocarbon fuel. Carbon and hydro hydrogen atoms in the fuel has to be converted into products, which are final products like carbon dioxide and water vapor. So, in order to do that, how much air is required? So, that is the calculation involved in stoichiometry. Since we are assuming that the complete combustion is occurring, this value is a theoretical value. One more thing is the oxygen. And nitrogen only constitute the air, and uh, the volumetric percentages of these are twenty one and seventy nine percent respectively. So we also went through the a simple calculation involving a simple hydrocarbon C S C X H Y. There is X C atoms and Y H atoms. So when you write the equation. In this form, which is a global reaction equation, written in terms of one kilomole of fuel, we have found that the value of Y, which is the number of kilomoles of oxidizer or air required, will be equal to X plus Y by four. There are three things here. The products you can note that carbon has converted into CO two, so X moles of CO two has formed. Y by two moles of H two O has formed, and uh, the nitrogen, which is coming along with the air, remains inert. That is, it just be present as nitrogen alone, not nitric acids, oxides. So we don't consider the formation of nitric oxides here. So from this equation, we can evaluate the. Stoichiometric air fuel ratio, which is the mass of the air required to completely burn one kilogram of fuel, which is written as 4.76 a 28.84, which is the molecular weight of the air divided by the molecular weight of the fuel, calculated as 12 times x plus y. Fuel may contain nitrogen, oxygen, etc. In that case. The amount of oxygen required from air is lesser. Now, always the theoretical value we have calculated, but uh, the actual amount of air supplied can be different. See, for example, in some cases, the amount of air available will be less than a kilo moles. So that condition is called oxygen star starved condition. Because the amount of oxygen available is lesser than that. Theoretically required. This occurs in several combustion or fire phenomena. This causes incomplete combustion, forming products like CO, OH, H, etc. When there is poor ventilation and uh, fire occurs in compartments, etc., we encounter this condition. One more thing is the final products CO two. When it is subjected to high temperature, then it can dissociate to CO. So, final products can also be unstable and they can dis uh, dissociate to CO. So H two can dissociate to H two and O two, etc. So, in order to close the equation, the the Reaction equation, which is written in a global form, we need to take the help of second law of thermodynamics and uh, use the concept of chemical equilibrium in order to do that. So, the products of combustion are not certain when there is oxygen stored condition. On the other hand, if I take oxygen Which is excess, that is more than a kilo moles. Then 
we will see that in the products some oxygen will also be present okay so in that case basically the equation can be easily written if there is no dissociation okay so oxygen excess condition can be seen in the open fires or fires where good amount of ventilation is present so let us uh, see another useful parameter equivalence ratio which we have already seen which is defined as the ratio of stoichiometric air fuel ratio to the actual air fuel ratio so now when i say the amount of oxygen supplied is more than the stoichiometric amount then the equivalent ratio will be less than 1 if the amount of oxygen supplied is less than the theoretical value then fuel will be rich in the mixture so that will contribute to equivalent ratio greater than 1 and so on so now if you consider a scenario where excess oxygen is supplied but dissociation also takes place then the equation written here can be solved only when chemical equilibrium concept is used if for example in this equation left hand side the reactant side is very well known but in the product you can see that there are a kilomoles of co2 b kilomoles of co and c kilomoles of o2 see excess oxygen can contribute to o2 in the products plus dissociation of co2 also can contribute to this so in order to solve for a b c i have only two equations from the atom balances so for example h balance and n balance will not contribute to any equation but c balance and o balance will contribute to two equations involving a b and c but we need one more equation so we go for elementary reactions like this in this particular case we have considered co2 dissociation so that co2 dissociation can be written in molecular form so elementary reactions are written in molecular form as opposed to the global reactions which are written in molar form or number of kilomoles in terms of number of kilomoles so co2 giving co plus half o2 will be the reaction which is actually reversible reaction that means simultaneously the forward and reverse reaction will take place and at a given temperature and pressure there will be certain amount of co co2 and o2 present in the products that is the values of a b and c can be calculated as a function of pressure and temperature using the concept of chemical equilibrium so we also seen that in order to invoke the chemical equilibrium we define a parameter called gibbs free energy which is g equal to h minus ts where g is the gibbs Uh, energy free energy h is the specific enthalpy and um, s is the entropy so now for the given elementary reaction we will find what is called molar gibbs free energy change delta g which is nothing but the gibbs free energy of the products minus the gibbs free energy of the reactant gibbs free energy expressed on per kilo mole basis now for the reaction written as co2 giving co plus half o2 the products are co and o2 and the reactant is co2 so delta g is written as the gibbs free energy of the products which are co and o2 minus the gibbs free energy of the reactant so now equilibrium constant based on partial pressure which is kp is defined in two ways one as a function of temperature in terms of delta g so kp equal to exponent of minus delta g by rut where delta g is calculated as a function of temperature at atmospheric pressure p not kp is also expressed in terms of partial pressures of the products divided by the partial pressures of the reactant so in this case we have to just multiply the partial pressure of the products co and o2 
divided by the partial pressure, only one reactant, so partial pressure of CO2. But this partial pressure is actually divided by the atmospheric pressure, and uh, the exponent will be the number of molecules of this. For example, CO has 1, O2 has 0.5, and CO2 is 1 as per this chemical reaction. So, now the partial pressure can be written in terms of mole fraction by using the total pressure. That means the reaction can occur at a pressure of P, which can be different than the atmospheric pressure P0. So, Pi by P0 can be written as Xi into P by P0. When you invoke this, I can write the expression for Kp as exponent of minus delta, D by, delta G by RUT, which is equal to the mole fraction of CO into P by P0 power 1, mole fraction of O2 P by P0 power 0 0.5 divided by mole fraction of CO2 into P by P0 power 1. So, what is mole fraction? Based upon this equation, mole fraction can be got. See, for example, for CO2, it is A divided by the total number of moles of the products, which is nothing but A plus B plus 8 plus C plus 51.7, that is the total number of moles of the products. Similarly, for CO, it is B by NP and uh, for uh, O2, it is C by NP. So, putting that, you get a equation. This will be the third equation which we need to close the in number of system of equations, but as opposed to the carbon balance equations here, these two, which are say equation 1 and 2, the third equation what we get here using equilibrium will be a nonlinear equation. So, we need to solve these three sets of equation, nonlinear equations, uh, and get the values of A, B, and C. So, once I get that, then the product information is complete for me. So, for Cases where the products com contain incomplete combustion products like CO, etc., even H2 can also be there, and so on. We need to in, in, uh, involve several elementary equations and find the Kp for each, each of these equations and uh, try to generate more equations to close the set of equations. That is, the number of equations should be equal to the number of unknowns. Now, in the case of multi component fuels, the volumetric composition of the fuel can be complex. For example, for LPG, we have several species in this, which is listed in this. So, for example, this data is got from IOCL. Okay. So, it has saturated hydrocarbons, non saturated hydrocarbons, isomers, etc. Okay. So, the chemical formula for isomers will be same as the normal species, but the structure will be different. That means the rate at which it may react or it may the bonds may break and form, etc., will be different. So now considering so this composition is by volume. So if you add them, it will be 100 percent. So let us take 100 kilomoles of fuel and you can write the equation like this. The red color. Uh, text shows the the reactants, the fuel basically, fuel component of the reactant constituting 100 kilomoles of the fuel LPG. Then for that, how much oxidizer is required is written as M times O2 plus 3.76 N2 and the products obviously will be CO2 where all the carbon is converted to CO2 then H2O and the nitrogen remains inert. So, this stoichiometric calculation. So, now it is customary to write the reaction in terms of 1 kilomole of fuel. So, just divide this by 100 and I get the equation written here. Based upon that, if I do the uh, atom balance of C, H and O, I will get the values of A, B and C. And uh, from that, I can find the air fuel ratio stoichiometric as 15.23. Then we also covered the solid fuel where you can see that solid fuels if it is a for example a charring type of fuel or any solid fuel can be subjected to say two type of analysis. One is called proximate analysis in which the major components heterogeneous components can be got revealed that is 
volatile gaseous components trapped fixed carbon the solid carbonaceous uh, particle that is uh, graphite then any moisture trapped inside then any minerals so these four contents will be revealed then ultimate analysis will give you the elemental composition of chon s etc then once you get this information then you can try to get the stoichiometric air required for burning the volatile alone or burning the entire solid so let us consider an example of a wood where the moisture is negligible and also ash content is negligible so we can say it has 80% volatile and 20% carbon and uh, this is by the proximate and by ultimate analysis it is having 50% carbon 8% hydrogen 41.5% o and 0.5% nitrogen so in this case the analysis for the stoichiometric air required for the volatiles alone can be done but first you have to understand what is constituting the volatiles typically the volatile will be having species like ch4 c2h2 c2h4 co h2 o2 n2 etc so now this can be got from mass spectrometry spectrometry or the gas chromatography and uh, we can get the values of this uh, value but it will be very tough to determine because it may be changing with the rate of uh, volatile release or rate of heating of this etc generally for simple analysis it is enough that we take some components like this and understand what will be the molecular weight of that so approximately literature has revealed that the molecular weight of volatile component from wood will be up around 30 kg per kilo mole so based upon that i can constitute a equivalent fuel which has some amount of c atoms h atom o atoms and n atoms like cx hy oz and np so now the value of x y etc can be got by this simple formula for example for the carbon it is weight of carbon in volatile divided by molecular weight of carbon divided by weight of volatiles in the wood the total volatiles in the wood divided by the molecular weight of volatiles so when you say volatile the weight of carbon in the volatile will be 50 which is the total carbon minus 20 which is in the fixed carbon so 30 by 12 divided by 80 by 30 similarly for hydrogen which is present only in the volatile is 8 by 1 by 80 by 30 and so on so we got the equivalent fuel as c 0.94 h3o 0.97 n 0.013 and uh, it is again customary to keep the number of atoms of carbon as 1 so that you just divide this by 0.94 and get this composition further noting that the nitrogen is very small in small proportion then you neglect that also and round off so you get a gas phase species as ch3o so for that i can write the stoichiometric equation and get the air fuel ratio stoichiometric that is theoretical value of air that is 5.5 uh, 35 kg of air per kilogram of volatile i can do the stoichiometric calculation for burning the entire wood itself this is quite simple because only use the ultimate analysis and uh, find the value of x y etc for the equivalent fuel where x will be now 50% no so 0.5 by 12 y will be 0.08 by 1 z will be 0.415 by 16 this is for the oxygen and for nitrogen it is 0.005 by 14 so you get a equivalent fuel like this and uh, when you write the stoichiometric equation like what i have shown here you will get that for burning 1 kg of wood you require 6.66 kg so please understand that this is for the particular wood when the wood uh, proximate and uh, ultimate analysis values change then this value also will change now heat calculations heat release rate from the fire is very important quantity so how will you calculate the heat uh calculate heat which is released typically 
why this heat release is important because we have to calculate fire loading fire loading is the parameter that indicates the potential hazard in the case of a fire okay so heat release rate per unit area or area of the fire that is called heat release flux heat output from a fire per unit area it has a unit of joule per meter square so now calorific value or heating value of the material which is kilo joule per kg say joule per kg that is known basically from tests like a bomb calorimeter test etc then if you find the rate at which this particular fuel is burning in kg per second then the heat release rate will be calorific value into mass burning rate that is joule per kg into kg per second that is watts heat release rate in watts joule per second okay now calorific value is the heat release when 1 kg of material is completely burnt so normally it is specific value joule per kg or kilo joule per kg mega joule per kg etc now calorific value of materials used in several applications are determined by different types of calorimetrics calorimeters okay calorimeters say for example bomb calorimeter okay now there is a way to calculate the calorific value using first law of thermodynamics this is actually theoretical value but actually goes very close to the measured values okay let us consider a control volume that means a flow reactor some reactants are entering some products are going out and uh, you can take out some heat from this okay so now let us say that the flow of reactants is basically say n r that is kilo moles per second is the rate at which reactants are flowing in n dot p will be the rate at which the products are moving out so now first law of so let us say this happens in a steady manner that is reactants come out products go out and heat is released out at a given rate that's all so now we can see that the first law of thermodynamics for steady state steady flow condition can be written as q dot minus w dot x so w dot x is the some type of work which is involved for example in this particular case it is zero if it is turbine then that work developed by the turbine will be wx but in this case w dot x is zero there is nothing no, no type of work is involved here so the right hand side there is no accumulation of energy within the control volume because it is steady flow steady state what happens is here outgoing the outgoing uh, mass that is number of moles of the products into its standard enthalpy hi which is molar base so this is actually kilo mole per second and this has a unit of joule per kilo mole and uh, this enthalpy of the products is calculated at the temperature at which the product leaves so this product leaves at the temperature of tp reactant can come at the temperature of tr okay now tp can be equal to tr for standard condition so similarly you do for the reactant side so there may be n products and m reactant components in the mixture okay so now in the reactant side also the kilo mole per second flow rate of each reactant species into its enthalpy which is molar enthalpy basically joule per kilo mole so this difference 
will be equal to the heat which is coming out basically because this heat is coming out of the reaction chamber because of the fact that the combustion reaction is an exothermic reaction and uh, the product's enthalpy mixture mixture of the product has some enthalpy that is lesser than the reactant enthalpy okay so how to find the hi over at bar which is called standard or absolute enthalpy that is the first task q q dot to, to find the q dot this we have to find the individual species or individual components standard enthalpy okay now let us go with an example consider a single step equation for methane combustion where the equivalence ratio phi equal to 1 okay that is i am just supplying the theoretical amount of air to this and also there is no dissociation complete products are considered so ch4 plus 2o2 plus 3.76 into giving co2 plus 2 h2o plus I, uh, nitrogen again inert so 7.52 times nitrogen so now as per the first law i can write q dot w dot x is zero so q dot equal to say products 1 kilo mole of co2 so 1 into h of co2 at the product temperature plus 2 kilo moles per second flow out please understand these are all the kilo moles see if uh, 1 kilo mole of methane comes in with stoichiometric air then 1 kilo mole of co2 will leave as a product per second 2 kilo moles of h2o will leave etc so here n dot n dot co2 will be equal to 1 n dot h2o will be equal to 2 this is n dot h2o okay and so on so we can see that in the product 1.52 Kilo mole per second of N two is leaving. So this is the what I have given in the top row is the enthalpy of the products minus the reactant side. I have methane. So one kilo mole of methane. So here N of methane, N dot of methane equal to one, and the temperature at which methane comes in is the reactant temperature T R. similarly so hydrogen sorry oxygen 2 kilo moles of oxygen per second comes in similarly 7.52 of nitrogen comes in so you write the equation like this so this is the first law equation so if i know the values of hi of every species in kilo mole sorry uh, in joule per kilo mole then i can find the value of q okay so standard enthalpy of the species are calculated as a function of temperature because in general enthalpy will be a function of temperature and pressure but since combustion reactions in fire etc temperatures will be higher densities will be lower so ideal gas equation of state can be invoked so the product or reactant mixture can be considered as an ideal gas mixture and for an ideal gas mixture u the internal energy is a function of temperature similarly h is equal to u plus pv is also a function of temperature that is u plus rt is also a function of temperature so pressure variations etc will not contribute to any change in the enthalpy so what we do is the standard enthalpies are found as a function of temperature then we can find the q and the q is negative because of the fact that it is rejected from the combustion chamber to the surrounding surroundings gains the heat now what is standard heat of reaction or the important definition is defined as the heat generated when reactants are supplied at one atmosphere pressure 298 kelvin this is called the reference state 
and the products are formed. But <coughs> you release the heat, the heat from the combustion chamber such that products are cooled again to 298 Kelvin, which is the standard reference temperature. That means in this case Tp equal to Tr equal to 298. Okay. So, that means we are extracting the maximum heat possible from the combustion chamber. So, this is the standard heat of reaction. Now, how will you calculate the standard enthalpy of a species? For that, I use this equation. Standard enthalpy H bar of any species I at any temperature T is calculated as this is enthalpy of formation, enthalpy of formation of the ith species at the reference temperature. What is reference temperature? T or E F equal to 298 Kelvin. Reference temperature and at standard atmospheric pressure P A T M. This is 1 A T M. P A T M is atmospheric pressure which is equal to 1 A 1 atmospheric or you can say 101 325 pascals. So, you conduct the experiment first, okay, where you have some basic elements and uh, create the particular product or particular species. Cool the product to 298 Kelvin. This experiment is performed at 1 atmospheric pressure. What is the heat released in that is the enthalpy of formation. That means, if there is a species like CO, CO2, H2, etc., they have to be formed. So, what is the heat interaction when this particular species is formed? That is called enthalpy formation. If this occurs at standard conditions like 1 atmospheric pressure and 290 Kelvin, then we call it standard enthalpy of formation. Okay. Then this is the energy, we can say energy which, it, which, is, the, which is possessed by the species at the 298 Kelvin temperature. Now, the actual temperature can be higher than that, say 500 Kelvin. So, what is the heat required to rise the temperature of the species from 298 Kelvin to 500 Kelvin? That is called sensible enthalpy. Delta HI, this is called sensible enthalpy. So, standard heat, standard enthalpy HI, the overhead bar I told you this is for the molar, okay, will be equal to the standard enthalpy of formation plus sensible enthalpy. Do you understand? So, first of all, we need some values of enthalpy formation and a way to calculate the sensible enthalpy. Okay, now the what is enthalpy formation? It is the increase in enthalpy when one mole of compound is formed at constant pressure of one atmosphere from natural elements. Please understand that we have to have we have to form the material. Okay, for example, CO two. H2O, CH4, all the fuel, okay, CH4, C2H2, C2H4, etc. In order to form this, we need some natural elements which are already available. Natural elements are already available, okay. So, when I form the particular compound from natural elements at constant pressure in the reference state, that is 1 atmosphere, 298, it enters and the products are cooled to 298. What is the increase in enthalpy or heat released due to this or heat interaction due to this particular process? That is the enthalpy formation. 